All right, welcome to CNET's live coverage of CES 2015. We're coming to you live from the CNET stage at the South Hall of the Las Vegas Convention Center. I'm Bridget Carey. And I'm Jeff Bacalar. And every morning this week, we're here with the Inside Scoop, where we sift through some of the more interesting announcements and news stories happening right here at CES. Today is the official start of the show. The doors have opened, and thousands of attendees are flooding the show floor. Joining us on the stage today is CNET Executive Editor Roger Chang, who's here to help us with this morning's big news, because yesterday was a very big <laughs> news day. It was press day. Thanks so. for being here, man. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. So, first thing I want to talk about with you right off the bat is, uh, is 4K, because yeah. 4K is actually a legitimate thing now? It's becoming one, yeah. Right? It's, it's been, I feel like it's been a joke for a few years, right? It's sort of just it's, been this punchline to yeah. the entire yeah. consumer the industry tele hammers yeah. on, we want you to buy 4K TVs. Right. And consumers are like, no. And it's sorry. amazing because 4K is already not as much of a joke as 3D was. Yes. Right? Yeah, it's actually, there's, there's some credibility building up behind it, right? Yep. Yesterday there was an announcement that Hollywood and the tech companies are all kind of joining together to put out more, more Ultra HD content, which is, that's a good sign that, you know, this isn't a joke anymore. I, there's some sort of comfort, I take, in the fact that these studios yeah. all agreed on something? Yeah, what do we're, you not, think about we're not that? looking at like an, H, like an HD, DVD, Blu-ray type battle. Right. There's, no, there's, no, there's no standards war or anything like that. I think everyone is on the same page for once in, in kind of building up that library of 4K content. So now, uh, do you know off the top of your head like who the, the, the cooperating studios were? Yeah, Disney and Fox okay. are uh, two major players, and you've got the big Panasonic, Samsung, a lot of the major TV makers all joining up together, and that's a, that's a good sign that we're actually going to see some of this stuff out there. Consumers will actually have something to watch on those really expensive 4K TVs. Right. Now, <laughs> speaking of expensive, yep. you and I were talking a little bit before we went on the air here. 4K is still not something you could sort of get on an yeah. impulse. It is not an average Joe purchase, right? right. You, you do have to have a decent amount of disposable income to buy one of these things. Sure. Um, but I was saying that you know, TCL is uh, it's not a well-known company, but it's a company known for creating cheap TVs, and they're going to come out with a 4K TV this year, and that's going to bring the prices down. I think you know, when, when those no-name brands come in and they start... <laughs> Shoving those Walmart TVs, you're going to start seeing affordable 4K TVs out so, there. So TLC? Is that TCL. TCL? It eh, doesn't matter. Enough, um, <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't matter. Uh, what, so they're going to be like kind of like the Vizio? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what Vizio used to be? But then are they going to all of a sudden rebrand and everyone's going to think they're quality stuff? Oh, I guess maybe, if they make quality maybe. stuff. I mean, they're, uh, the TVs they put out last year were pretty highly reviewed by, by David, actually. Right. Like the, the Roku embedded TVs that TCL makes were actually really, really uh, well received. Sure. So, all right. Yeah. On the other side of that, you have LG's OLEDs, which are very impressive. But yeah, they're not going to be at practical prices. I mean, the current one that they have out is around ten grand in the U.S. And how big? It, how That's large? That's like sixty-five inches and curved. But we don't have the prices on the ones they're showing today. But when you look at that, you can guess. Yeah, the OLED 4Ks with this new special quantum dot technology ain't going to come cheap. I, got, I love the name, it's Quantum Dot. Yeah. I that, mean, that's what I was I saying. I don't know what it means, but it sounds it awesome, right? It means time travel, <laughs> is what it means. <laughs> Turn on the TV, there's a time travel option in your remote control. There you go, no more flux capacitor, just quantum dots. I miss the flux capacitor. So do I. So uh, I, I'm also finding a lot of these 4K TVs, they're coming in two uh, flavors, curved and flat. Yeah. What do you think about curved and versus flat? You know, I, I'm, st I'm still a big believer that curved is a gimmick. I mean, they, they're, the TV manufacturers are desperate to find a reason for you to buy a new TV. And, right. Uh, I know you're, theoretically it's supposed to be more immersive, but if you've got a bunch of people sitting on the couch watching curved TV, someone's going to have a bad angle. It just feels, it doesn't feel right. Yeah, I'm just trying to wrap my head around a situation where curved TV makes sense in my living room, and I can't do it. No. Right. I don't uh, know. I don't mind a bendable one, but only because it just seems cool to like bend it back and forth. To just back and forth. Yeah. Your back accordion and forth. Flat television. Bend, flat bend. Uh, all right. Speaking uh, of TVs, uh, the, the most popular headline from yesterday has to be Sling Television, yeah. and what is going on with this sort of uh, twenty dollar a month subscription based live TV streaming service. What are your first thoughts about that? I and mean, this is what cord cutters have been asking for for years, right? This is. Uh, the fact that they have ESPN, CNN, I mean, live sports and live news are really the missing factors if you're a cord cutter, right? You can't get, you can't get any sports, you can't get games you want because most of them are on cable. 
Uh, and the fact that you can get it go around and you can use your Roku, you can use an Xbox to play this, it's a big deal. I think it's going to shake up the industry for sure. But it's not perfect being able to just pick your channels a la carte just yet. No, it's, it's definitely not that ideal situation, but it's a sort of a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I think uh, both the content guys and you know, Dish, they're all sort of experimenting. They're not sure what to make of this yet. It's, uh, it's sort of kind of a wild, wild west. Everyone's just trying to figure it all out. Mm -hmm. So, and the fact that it's twenty bucks is it's cheaper than what people were expecting. I think right. the uh, speculation was around thirty. So, it's pretty affordable. Mm -hmm. We talked about this yesterday. You're really only getting Turner and Disney stuff. Yeah. Right. So, I have to watch Bravo. <laughs> For your Desperate Housewives? For that, and they have new scripted stuff, which is really above average. Like, really <laughs> above average stuff. I really like Andy Cohen, I want to be able to watch him. Right. So, where am I? You're still stuck. I I'm, mean, I'm in limbo here. Yeah. I mean, you can, obviously, you can borrow a subscription, or borrow an uh, account from your brother, your sister, a relative. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, that's the, the problem the cord cutters have faced for years, right? Like they, they can't get the content they want exactly and when they want it. Sure. Uh, so, it's, like I said, this is a start, and it's a good start. So, all right, obviously, you know, each specific channel, people are going to face challenges. For me, you know, you talk about ESPN, that's the big mega, especially here in America, like you have to have Absolutely. the bro channel, yes. right? So you have ESPN. I love watching local sports. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to be tethered to my local regional provider. Right. Like in New York, we have MSG yeah, for, yeah. for hockey and basketball. And in that case, you are just out of luck. Right. right. So yeah. what are we, like, so who is this for? Is this really just for that millennial generation that I just don't know any of those people? I think so. Yeah. I think it's for that generation that grew up never subscribing to cable in the first place. Right. They just sort of went online only. And this, for them, right. this is, this is something new. This is something different, right? Sure. Because they've never had the cable TV environment. So, like I said, it's a good first step. Right on. Another topic that we've been talking about yesterday is we're talking about um, you know TV on the web, but there's also now smart TVs, and they're having their own operating systems in the battle between the operating systems. You have LG's WebOS, right. good old WebOS is back again. <laughs> it cannot stay down. <laughs> and then you have Samsung with Tizen. Yep. And I'm kind of curious on what you think about where things are going between this battleground, if one is, I guess, better than the other yet, right. or do we know that yet? No, I don't think we've uh, gotten a good chance to look at the Tizen operating system. I mean, WebOS is about a year old now. Right. Um, you know, people seem to like it. I mean, there's, there was, I think, a cult following for WebOS even back in the Palm days. Um, but it's, it's more a matter of these TV, these companies uh, establishing kind of a, uh, their presence in, 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 smart, in TVs, unlike smartphones, right? They kind of let, they sort of ceded all their control to Google with Android, and they're, they're trying to avoid that with smart TVs, right? They want, they want their own operating system, they want their own platform that they can run. And so it's a proprietary thing. But then people want Android TV. Or then they also just want to watch that Sling TV on an app within that smart TV. Right. So things are getting kind of messy with where can you watch yeah. what. I mean, it's, again, it's, it's these companies, not, they don't want to be beholden to Google. And that's ultimately why they're not doing Android, which is probably the most logical answer for everyone, right? Just keep it open, keep it consistent, keep it an open standard. But these companies don't ever think like that. So. See, and that's what worries me, because I want this universal sort of standard, right. and then when it gets fragmented with everyone taking a different OS, there's only one loser, and that's us. That's, that's technology, unfortunately. Yeah. Fragmentation is definitely just it's part of development of technology. It's, right. it's what we have to deal with. It's, I mean, you, we, we make fun of Blu-ray versus HD v yeah. DVD, but this is the same damn thing over yeah. and over again. Pretty right? much, yeah. yeah. People yeah. who remember Google TV are now looking at Android TV, and they're like, wait, wasn't that Google TV? And like, <laughs> the terms are very confusing Yeah, for Google consumer. also didn't really roll out their service that polished, so it was, right. yeah, there was definitely some hiccups there. Yeah. Um, we're talking about in the beginning about content and where you can find 4K content, because obviously that's the big question everyone's trying to answer now, why you should even buy a 4K TV. Yeah. But there's been also introductions of new ways to make your own 4K. So even if you don't know where to get it, you can at least make your own, because so, uh, yeah. Sony had a couple of new cameras. They yeah. upgraded uh, their other camcorder, it's $1,000 for... for cam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 4K for 1K, they kept saying, which it's clever, but I'm like, 1K is still a lot. Yeah, yeah. you still so said $1,000. <laughs> right. Let's not forget that. <laughs> 1K means 1000 yeah. bucks. Um, I thought we were also done with, like, handy cams, right? I didn't think I we, we were going to come back to that. I thought it was just going to be, like, 
this forever. Now, they do have 4K on their smartphones, which she kind of threw yes. in the press conference, oh, and don't forget about our Xperia smartphones. So yeah, I'm pretty sure, I have a G3, I'm pretty sure it records like maybe 3K maybe. or 2.5K, two and and yeah. something like that. 5K, yeah. Right? I think that, that's good Ks? enough. There's a couple of Ks in there. So $1,000 for this uh, really aptly named AX33. <laughs> and then if you want to get into the action uh, camera, which yep. they used Tony Hawk to help debut. They tried it out for it, yeah. Right, we still don't know how much that's going to cost. No. But, you know, let's give them a little bit of credit. There really doesn't seem to be, at least we haven't heard of right away, another action 4K camera. No, here no obviously at CES. They're, they're going after that white hot GoPro market, uh, but they, now they've got a better story to tell with 4K video. Again, like you said, the price is the real issue, right? Like, how affordable is this thing going to be stacked up next to a GoPro? Right, so, like we said, the Handycam is $1,000, <laughs> the FDR X1000V which is the action camera. Mm. Why don't they just call it an action cam, like the Sony action cam? Yeah. That's another issue. Uh, yeah. This one, this one they're saying right now maybe $500? Is that, wow. does that make sense? That's what that we're looking here on, our, on the CNET website right now. But that I don't know about that. seems crazy That high. seems cheap, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I've got some pocket change for that right, right here. Yeah, that, that, that fits right in. Yeah. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about phones. Yeah. Wasn't like a massive sort of groundswell for phones yesterday. And CS has never been a big show for phones, right? That's Mobile Except World Congress. Except when the Palm Pre debuted. Speaking of Web OS, right. Yeah. right? That holds a special place in my heart, that, <laughs> that phone. Uh, LG's coming back with the second iteration of the Flex. Yep. So why do I need a phone that can flex? And what do you think about the, the Flex 2? I mean, I look at it more from a long-term perspective. This is the first step in the evolution of how our smartphones are going to look like. Right. They're, they're, you know, it's, it's a little bit bendable now. It flexes a little bit. And that doesn't really mean much, but it's sort of the, that first step towards the foldable phone or bendable phone or these truly flexible screens. And that's a few years down the line, but uh, I like that LG is you know, pushing the envelope and, and you know, evolving this phone. The very first one, the G Flex from last year, it looked obscenely large. It was a six inch display. And it, because of the curve and the size, it just it looked weird. Kind of like banana-y, right, yeah, a little bit? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. And so this one, the screen's a little bit smaller, actually, which is kind of a reverse of most trends. Sure. Uh, and the, the, the screen's a lot clearer. And it, overall, it looks, like a, it looks like a real phone. And the curve is just sort of a nice benefit. It kind of curves around your face. I guess that's what they say. Does it? It kind of does one of these things. It, it develops your face. Also, if you, you know. put it in your back pocket, it curves that too. Sure. There you go. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. It just It's like a nice little like butt pad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the phone for people who sit on their phones, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, the phone flex. for people who sit on phones. That should be the tagline right there. I think we did their work for them. Uh, all right, so what, what else about... So you said you, you sort of began saying you think flexible tech is sort of where we're headed. For phones, what, yeah. What other evidence has got you convinced that that's going to I mean, be the Samsung case. Samsung and LG have made comments about it. They're, they they each have their own display units and they've been talking about how that's where they want things to go. Right. These screens that can bold, uh, fold and bend and it enhances the durability, right? You can drop this phone and it's if it's bendable or foldable, it's theoretically more rugged, so. But it, I mean, I, I've yet to see any evidence that that's the case. Like when you drop a phone, right. if it can flex a little bit, it, does that make it more oh, yeah, it's fairly new. I mean, they, they claim it does. They right. claim that if you drop this G Flex 2, that it's less susceptible to permanent damage than a regular phone, than your iPhone, right? Right. Okay. All right. We'll have to take their word for it, I guess. For probably, now. Probably because you can't find a case that's curved to put around it. That's true, too. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. How's that going to work? Or are they just yeah. upsetting every case manufacturer in the world? Well, you have to remember, most of these phones don't have cases that come with them, right? They're, uh, sure. Unless it's a GS5 or an iPhone, you're not going to get a lot of case options. Uh, this phone, like its predecessor, has that alleged self-healing back, which minor scratches will actually heal if you apply some light to it. So I, I tried it, and it, it sometimes you, works. It doesn't work. Repairs itself. It actually that there's a Plus, polymer that actually kind of like heals itself. Right. It's like the like Terminator, like Terminator phone. Yeah. Well, yeah, Wolverine totally. Is, so. Huh. Mutant abilities. Like, the problem is, if you scratch it too deep, then they go, "Well, you scratched it wrong." Right. And, then it doesn't heal. But. That was that was beyond the threshold of exactly. self repair. There, there's like a there is a threshold, and we don't know what it is. So, <laughs> all right. Well, Roger, thanks for being here, man. Thanks Pleasure. Man. All right, uh, Bridget, take us out. All here. right. Well, thank you again, Roger. And that does it for this episode of Inside Scoop. So join us 
again tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. We're going to keep talking about the latest news surrounding CES and stay tuned at ces.cnet.com for CNET's continuing coverage live all this week. Thanks for joining us.